Jonah, Jonah, Jonah has been freaking being kind of, I don't know. I've been naming off centers and stuff and every center I name because he just kind of gives me this look in his eye and then starts laughing at the centers that I'm naming in terms of like how good they are. I'm not kind of saying well on my you, I don't know. I just can't take you seriously because I'm naming these centers like trying to put them into like the really good guy. I feel like there's a bunch of really good guys and then some just and then the rest are just not that good. Similar to I have a feeling Jonah has some hot takes for this pod. Yeah. He so, wouldn't give us the text in the group chat if he didn't have some hot takes. We're going to get into this list and um, yeah, like Shannon was alluding to, uh, <laughs> I think we might have some pretty controversial takes on this podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we might. I think center has got to be the position where I think my opinion differs the most from like what yeah. the national media perception is. Or you have a specific strong opinion of what you think a center should do. Definitely, exactly. Yeah. So I'll get into that because I think center is the one position where I really value defense above offense and especially versatility too. Because center. It's definitely a position where you see at like the biggest moments, like guys getting played off the court, like the Lakers won the championship last year and they completely because of their centers, really, honestly. Well, that, but then also they kind of took JaVel McGee and Dwight Howard off the court at like the biggest moment <laughs> of the season and went with Anthony Davis at the five instead. So um, it just goes to show how many like truly versatile centers and how um, there are in the league who can. But a big play. part of the Lakers' success was just punking people because of how many big centers they had oh, yeah. and defensive yeah. centers at that. Yeah, that's a great point, too. During the regular season, I think a huge part of their success was owed to their rim protection. And um, obviously, Anthony Davis, probably the best rim protecting five or rim protecting power forward in the league. But yeah. then. Jeff Bell, McGee, and Dwight Howard, super athletic crimp protectors as well. But I think in the sake of time, unless, Shannon, you have something to add about your um, criteria for this list. Um, I don't think so. I'm with you on the defense. I think I might value offense a little more than you. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Oh, so, nah, you, so. so you made you made a list? No, I didn't make a list. But Okay. Um, he'll he'll get mad at you for that. He gave me the... Um, Stink eye when I when he said that no, I don't like this. I said it was all up here. He's like, oh really? Uh, yeah, bro. Well, I like to go like use Jonah's list as like the structure. Yes, and then like the, me and Kellen give our exactly. opinions. That's because if we were all trying to go through lists, it would go so long. So I think we might get the um kind of controversy or maybe shock value started off a little bit early on the pod today. I actually have five players in my top tier. I did it in tiers again, and I have five Five? players. Yes. All right, run them off. Joel Embiid, and these are in order. Joel Embiid. Let's go. Good pick for number one, baby. Rudy Gobert. (laughs) Nikola Jokic. Bam Adebayo and Carl Anthony Towns. You put Bam at four? So, obviously, the controversy is Gobert over Jokic. And then you had Bam at four? I did have Bam at four. So, we'll start at one. I think Joel Embiid uh, is the clear pick here. I don't think that part is really controversial. He's the best two-way center in the league. He's been basically yeah. unguardable on offenses. Shooting 50% from the mid-range, he gets to the line a ton. He has, nobody... His mid-range is butter, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. And he's a massive rim protector who blocks a ton of shots without fouling as well. He gets to the line so much, and he's an 85% free throw shooter. He's just unguardable offensively. Um, if injuries didn't exist, he would be in a tier of his own. He would be in – Yeah, that's a good line, take, so. yeah. It's just the injuries kind of pulling back because everybody else in this tier kind of plays more than he does, aside yeah. from Carl Anthony Towns this year. But um, yeah. he's at the bottom of this tier. I think let's get into Gobert over Jokic because I this is one where I really had to think about it. And what it basically came down to is 
I don't think either of these guys will be able to win a championship as the best player on their team. I think for a Gobert, it's going to be really hard just because he sort of lacks the versatility that you need in the playoffs. Like, I don't want to say his contributions get muted defensively, but they definitely get dulled to an extent. That's how I feel, yeah. Because, yeah, with that drop coverage scheme, he can take away shots at the rim for like probably 25 of the 30 teams in the NBA. But those other five teams where you really have to like play a switching defense or play a more versatile defense, like Rudy Gobert can't do as well in those settings. And so I just think it'll be really hard for him to be the elite defender that he is in the regular season because he's the best defender in the regular season by a country mile. But I just think it's hard for him to sustain that in the postseason. Nikola Jokic, I don't think you can win a championship with him as your best player, just because of the rim defense is all, always going to be so terrible. Like it's, uh, and act, it, I think maybe if you had a power forward, like an Anthony Davis or a Draymond green, just one mm. of those really good defensive power forwards. You That's might have to say, but yeah, I just don't, don't think the um, defense is there. Um, he, yeah, he just, um, the nuggets allow the most, um, shots at the rim per game they allow the highest percentage at the rim like yeah it's just it's just very hard and he can't switch he's not scheme versatile either so the defense is just like such a bummer for Nikola Jokic so both of these players have limitations that are very like limiting at the highest levels and Rudy Gobert yeah. I said this before best regular season defender Nikola Jokic by far is the best offensive center in the NBA. It's not close. He's one of the best offensive big men of all time. I think probably like Wilt Chamberlain or Kareem or like Bill Walton might, or Shaq maybe the, but Jokic Mm. is right up there with those guys. Yeah. I'm putting up there. I'm putting him up there with Kareem and Shaq. Yeah. And so, but what it comes and I think Gobert, the fact that he takes the jazz with, Guards, there. No, no, um, no. What'd you say? You cut out a little bit. I said where I was talking about Rudy Gobert. And I just think the fact that he takes a lineup with Conley and Mitchell, two really small guards. Their small forward is Royce O'Neal, who's six four, and that's the guy who has to guard like LeBron and Kawhi. And then Boyan Bogdanovich at power forward, a six ten slow unathletic European guy. He takes those <laughs> players and 6'10? He's 6'10? Yeah. Damn. Okay. He he takes those guys and he turns them into the third best defense in the entire league. Like that's pretty phenomenal. That is impressive. And Donovan Mitchell is a very good defender. Credit, you could say a lot of credit goes to he's done a wonderful job, but that defense if you don't have the best rim protector in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Damn, bro. And I said I value defense more than offense for centers. And that's and here's the thing, too. Rudy Gobert, he's not a bad offensive player. Like, he sets the best screens in the league. He's brutally efficient at the rim. He just dunks everything. He's an incredible offensive rebounder. So he's actually a major plus on offense. He does everything you could want a center to do on offense. And so Rudy Gobert's offense is just so much better than Jokic's defenses. And they're both the best at the position on the other end of the court. And so, yeah, I just think I'm going to take the best defensive center with awesome offense over maybe one of the best offensive centers of all time with pretty miserable defense. And yeah, I feel pretty good about Gobert at two. Jokic at three. Bam out of bio at four. Um, I think you could make a really really credible argument that Bam Adebayo might be the number one guy you want to have in the playoffs just because he can switch. He can play drop coverage and protect the rim. Mm. He's just a super versatile defensive center. He's our, I think his offensive versatility gets underrated because he yeah. can play out of the high post and be a really good passer. Miami runs their offense through him. He can get his, he can get his own shot by driving to the rim. He's added that pull-up mid-ranger into his game this year, so that's another... He has, yeah. bro. He has it on lock. He hit a little short, tiny mid-range game winner. Was that today? Yeah, that was just this morning, or this yeah. early afternoon. 
And if he wanted to, I'm sure he could do the Rudy Gobert thing and just be one of the best pick and roll centers in the league. He has the size and the athleticism. He sets really good screens, like, and he can fly above the rim. So I think his offensive versatility goes underappreciated as well. And then finally, I've got Carl Anthony Towns. I considered making Carl Anthony Towns a tier of his own in tier two, but ultimately I brought him back up here because this is more me trying to have foresight than anything, but I just am very high on Carl Anthony Towns because he's a set. What's up? Coming off the dribble or off of screens. You cut out. God, I'm sorry. He's a what coming off the what? The seven foot. Oh, he's a 40% shooter who takes really difficult shots, either coming off of screens or <laughs> off the dribble. Mm. And, and, um, geez, <laughs> for it. Yeah, and he's, <laughs> Seven one. He's pretty athletic. He was drafted out of Kentucky as a guy who was supposed to be a good rim protector. So I think he can get there on defense. I bet probably when the Timberwolves are more competitive, he'll like start trying harder, honestly. But actually, actually, you know what? As I say this, I think Carl Anthony Town should be in tier two all by Boom, himself. kaboom. That's what I was gonna say. That was yeah. my response. Yeah, he's, he's tier two. Smart. All right, let me give my let me give my responses to tier one. Okay. It's so hard because I feel like when making lists, a lot of times it makes the most sense to go more off the regular season. But to me, the, to me, the thing that gives a, the best argument for Jokic over Gobert is that I think that Jokic is more valuable in the playoffs. And that's been like the big thing that has made me like not be a huge Gobert guy is like you talked about, I think his defense does become a little less valuable in the playoffs, but it's so hard, dude, because how it's so hard to compare them because they have such opposite strengths. You know what I mean? To me, yeah. that makes it so hard to choose them. I think I would probably rock with Gobert too also, but that was just like the devil's advocate. Like, I think that Jokic's offense is – tough in the playoffs yeah it, that i think his offense is more sustainable in the playoffs than go bears defenses but the last point i'll make about Jokic, and i know you, you agreed with me but and so this isn't like any sort of um oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rebuttal, but this is just one final point before we move on nicole Jokic, he's a wonderful offensive creator but if i didn't have Jokic, i could still get that from other positions like if i had luka doncic or damian lillard or stephen curry or Giannis on my team i could still That's a good point i could still recreate that offense if i didn't have gobert on my team like there's no player in the NBA mm, that's a good point to top three defense. that's a good point dude honestly bro a year from now mm, i don't know i could see bam sliding up to two honestly yeah is this game just keeps getting better and better rounded, it feels like, and just how good of a two-way player he is. Um, this is um, totally speculation, and so um, don't pay too much attention to this. That, but if Bam Adebayo doesn't dislo- or doesn't or doesn't hurt his shoulder in the playoffs last year, and the Heat win the championship, what what's this conversation looking like? Right mm. Um, I'd still probably put him under Joel Embiid. I think I'd put him at two. Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I think I'd still have him at four, but okay. I I think so um, because yeah. he was he was but well because I mean that's assuming he has a big series against Anthony Davis because that's a big deal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's a good point too. That proves a lot to beat Anthony Davis in the playoffs would mean a lot, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, where I fall on um, out of bio, like I said before, he might be the one guy who I take of these five or four now that I've taken out towns. He might be the one guy I take of these four for the playoffs, but I just really struggle with um, if his defense is really that good. Why isn't Miami like an elite defense this year? The way that, yeah, because their personnel is certainly much better than what Rudy Gobert is working with. So mm, that's true. They have, you could say maybe it's been partially due to like, you know, Jimmy has sat out a ton. Yeah. Like I feel like there's been kind of holes that are dropping out of different games. And then you're left with, you know, your Tyler here and Duncan Robinson running around. They're great players, but 
it's not Jimmy Butler and, you know, it's, it changes up your defense. And I feel like, Oh, you know, honestly, I think that's a good point because the jazz have been for the most part, really healthy. Yeah. And so I feel like that can, it can be easier to build a consistent like chemistry and expectation from your defense when you have that health. And when you have players sliding in and out of the lineup, like it can be harder maybe, but. I, I think that's certainly the case, especially with the quick turnaround that he had from the bubble. But yeah, oh, yeah. And ult- ultimately it's a moot point too, because this whole argument is based on like Bam Adebayo, no, the best regular, three best regular season defensive centers. Hey, but Jonah. Wait, say that again. You cut it out. I cut it out again. But yeah, what I was saying is, what? Re- will you repeat What that? I was saying is it's a moot yeah, point though, because. Yeah, it's a moot point. It's a moot point because Bam Adebayo, we're, I'm not billing him as like this elite regular season defender. He might not even be like one of the top three or four best regular season defensive centers, but he turns it on in the playoffs. And that's why he's in tier one is because yeah. of his versatility. So yeah, that's all I kind of wanted to say about tier one. To clarify, uh, tier one, I'll get it to you after, Colin, but tier one is Embiid, Gobert, Jokic, Adebayo. Tier two is Cat all by himself. And that's where we are at right now at the top five. Cat by himself in tier two? Yeah, cat by himself. Yeah, that makes sense. That make yeah, because I was looking at the list and after cat it looked like a drop off. I was just wondering because I didn't think Bam was a center. I thought he was power forward. So like where would like Julius Randall fit into your list of centers if he was to be one? Well, I mean, if if he was a center, he'd be really low because, But isn't he considered Loki a center though? No. He's not? <laughs> No. no, really? Isn't he like six eight or six nine? Yeah, he is. But a, isn't he's... Bam Adebayo like six nine? Yeah, but Bam Adebayo plays center for the Heat. The the Knicks center is like Nerlens Noel or Mitchell Robinson or Tom. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, oh. all right. And Julius Randle doesn't play like a center. Like, I guess. Yeah. Facts. I just didn't know because like. I didn't think Bam, yeah, because I guess, yeah, Bam does play center, but I mean. But, but he does kind of break the mold of a center, to be fair. He handles the ball quite a bit, but. Yeah, yeah and that's kind of a thread throughout a couple of these guys we've mentioned are not so much what you'd expect from the traditional center. Rudy Gobert is probably the one who. Like, really traditional, yeah. Yeah, and in beat, I guess, to an extent. Yeah, he's like that throwback dominant center. Yeah, and Embiid is like traditional, traditional, mm-hmm. and Gobert is like yeah. traditional in the sense that he plays like the traditional archetype we'd expect in this modern era. Of right? Basketball. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. All right, so I think yeah, we've spent enough time on these top guys. I think we're all pretty much in agreement. Um, Except and so Jokic let's move on to tier two. I had I had um seven, no eight players in tier two. It goes from number six to number thirteen. Hmm. And I'll read them off in order. This is still in order. I actually went to 19. I felt pretty good about my list up to 19. And then it just kind of became mushed together tears. But 6 yeah. through 13, Clint Capella, Brooke Lopez, Miles Turner, Rashawn mm. Holmes, Kristaps mm. Porzingis, Jonas Valanciunas, Yusuf mm. Nurkic, and Al Horford. Mm, I think that's perfect. I like how high you have Clint Capella. He's great. He's been really good. Yeah, I agree. He's he's is really shored up the Hawks defense, which has been yeah very Freaking impressive. I forgot him. about him. He's another really good defensive center. Yeah, let's look at his on off stats because ass. he's also I have a lyric about Clint Capella. An upcoming song. Yeah. When Capella's been on the court, the Hawks defense has been 10 points per 100 possessions better. Wow. That's 97th percentile. So that is extremely impressive. Uh, When he's on the court, opponents are shooting 5% worse at the rim, which is 93rd percentile. Mm -hmm. Um, They're shooting less of their shots at the rim, which is also indicative of a very good center. So. Yeah, he's just probably behind Rudy Gobert, one of the best room protectors in the league. And he also has been made in a lab to run pick and roll with Trey Young. Yeah, true. Another one of those elite protectors is Miles Turner. He's a beast. Miles Turner. Good point. Yeah, he's number eight on my list. He also mm-hmm. adds the stretch element of shooting a little bit, which is what number seven on my list, Brooke Lopez, does as well. 
Oh yeah, dude. Brooke Lopez is knocked down, bro. And it's like, it surprises me still when I'm watching him for some reason. Like it just doesn't, it just catches me off guard, but he can shoot it. Yeah. And the reason I have Lopez seven and Turner eight, um, Turner's probably a little bit better of a rim protector. Lopez may be a little bit better of a shooter. Miles Turner is a little bit younger. So there are favor or there are um, things working in both of their favors. Turner may be yeah. a little bit more athletic, maybe a little bit more switchable. Lopez is just a lot bigger. So I think those traditional post centers like a Jokic, like a Embiid, like Turner, you can put him on those guys, but or Lopez, you could put him on those guys. Miles Turner would be having a much harder time with like a big. Yeah, player. that's a good point. Yeah, I definitely think Brooke is slightly better than and and Brooke is the much better rebounder. I think that's important as well. Yeah. Rashawn Holmes, number nine. He's another really solid. I think he's so underrated. He's maybe going to be one of the best free. He's going to be the best free agent center on the market this summer. Um, just pretty mm-hmm. athletic, a really good rim protector. And then he's also got a nasty floater. And so I just think he's a pretty good yes. all-round player. That's impressive to have. Yeah, he is good, dude. He is an appealing center. If you're a team looking for a center, definitely. Yeah, right now, um, from floater, <laughs> from floater range, he's making sixty percent of his shots, which is ninety nine. Damn, as a center, Jesus. Yeah, touch. He's got yeah, he's got crazy touch, and so that's why he's this high up. Kristaps, he's coming back after his injury. He's playing a lot. He has, bro. He was trash, and I was hating on him. And remember, what did you call him? The what did you call him? Anthony Tolliver. Yeah, but. <laughs> No, he's put that um, part. He's put that behind him now. Um, yes, his, his rim protection. I still don't think it's where it was before, um, but it's above average at least, and it's probably. Damn, bro! What if he was still in New York with with what they got going on in New York right now? That would be lit. That's a good. He'd be such a good fit in New York right now. Oh, dude! Because they need a shooter too. That would be crazy. Yeah, they could rip that. that that's a fun thing to think about. He would be playing pretty well there right now. Sling up three balls. Yeah, so I've got okay. Porzingis at 10, Valanchunas at 11. I really like Valanchunas. He's not the most versatile center, but he crashes the offensive glass. He's efficient. He's just the big early guy who defends the rim. He can defend any center in the post. Um, he's just kind he of bullies, that, yeah. He's just that classic enforcer type. Number 12, I've got Yusuf Nurkic. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Nurk coming off of his injury. His mobility has looked great. Um, it his, has. Rim, his rim protection is pretty awesome. He blocks a ton of shots. Uh, the offense, he can pass it, which is cool, I guess. But his efficiency is just kind of unacceptable. Dude, he's, he yeah. disappoints me so much offensively. He, he probably has like... I would say he uh, – there's a lot of young players in this tier, but he has so much potential, dude. He has so much skill and feel for the game, and you see that through his passing. And he does show good touch, but he – it's just like – I don't know. Like, there's times when it feels like he just, like, his brain shuts down or something like that. Like, he, he like, gets an open pass, and he, like, looks at the rim, and he just, like, flips something up, and it's like, you, what are you doing? Like, you're a huge guy. And, like, yeah. we've seen you poster people. Yeah, and like just do, just go up strong, and he just like flicks it up, and it's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. what's the point of that? It's so frustrating. Or like we talked about that time when he, um, in that game recently when he took that third foul or whatever that was, and it was like a, a dumb move, and it's like, what are you doing? He just frustrates me so much. Yeah, and he shot fifty four percent at the rim, which is seventh percentile for centers, so pretty lackluster, but. I mean, he's got such good tools defensively, but like does. being a seven footer, 280 pounds, but with the mobility he has. No, he has incredible body control. He, yeah. it amazes me when he like um, is going for a block and I'm like, he's going to foul him. Like you can kind of see that before the play. You know what I mean? Like the way that the mm-hmm. guy's attacking the rim and the way he's approaching it, you can kind of see it develop and it's going to, you yeah. think it's going to be a foul, but he avoids it. He has great body control for his size. I can't even. I don't even know how he does that. Yeah. Yeah, it's in very impressive. And then 13, I had Al Horford, who um, he's getting a little bit older. But, I mean, he's still a versatile player on both ends. He's 
not a switchable defender in the sense that he once maybe was, but he can still get out and hedge at the screen and backpedal and sort of play that cat and mouse game really well. On And he's still physical. He still can guard a bunch of centers in the post recall. Um, when he was a member of the Celtics, he gave um, Embiid a lot of troubles in that playoff series. When was that? Um, 2018, I want to say. So he can, um, he's definitely a good post defender. And then on offense, he can pass, he can shoot. Like he's just a very well-rounded player who makes his teammates better. The chemistry he developed with Shea Gilgis Alexander this season was very impressive. I think those two play off each other really well. Mm. And so I think Horford, he might still have some miles left on his tires, and that's why he's in tier two. Yeah, I agree. Dude, I was thinking about this. This is a little bit unrelated, but we're just talking about Horford and then Embiid. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that the Sixers didn't win with Jimmy Butler. Like that, they were stacked with Jimmy on their squad, bro. The big three of Simmons, Jimmy, and Embiid. Like, obviously, we saw Jimmy kind of like take on a whole new, like, look and stuff when he got to Miami, but he's, he's been a, a beast, bro. And that's just crazy. I mean, yeah. And, um, and it's a game seven roll in shot, you know what I mean? But right. And that, that Raptors team was really good. Especially they were really good, dude. Especially playing that playoffs. Like, I mean, honestly, to come as close as they did to taking down that team, that's like, yeah, that's, that's true. Impressive. That's true. I didn't watch that much of that series, and I wish I would have. Yeah, it was it was very fun. Um, Embiid, he had some really good games. I think game four, he was I, he had one game where he went off, but yeah. overall, maybe a bit of an underwhelming um series. So, any any thoughts about that before we move on to the next tier, or are we still in agreement for the most part? Yeah, I'm in agreement. Is there a certain player that I've left out that you wouldn't have? I mean, maybe. Who is it? Maybe a certain 2021 NBA All-Star. Oh. Wait, did you leave Montrezl out of Tier 2? Well, well yeah, we haven't, I, we haven't gotten to Montrezl. Oh, wait. Who? So let's get to Tier 3. These I named this tier mid-range starters, great backups. Oh, are you, are you talking about Vucevic? Yes. I'm talking about oh, damn, bro. Damn, I forgot about him. Yeah. This this tier goes 14 to 19. At 14, and keep in mind that within tiers, like they can go anyway. Like, um, I like the bottom tier, the bottom guy in this tier number 19. If you put him over my top guy in this tier number 14, like I'd be perfectly fine with it. So number 14, Christian Wood. Number 15, Jakob Pertle. Number 16, <laughs> Nikola Vucevic. Number 7, DeAndre Aiden. Number 18, Robin Lopez. And number 19, the center that nobody wanted, the center that got traded for nothing, Daniel Tice. I love Daniel. Oh, he, I don't like Daniel at all. Um, Wait, okay, honestly, I think I, I think I could good, see. Though. Huh? I like DeAndre Aiden. That's what I was going to say. I feel like he maybe could go a little bit higher on that list, but he has, he's kind of been inconsistent. Like there's been injuries I would go as stuff, far to but... say that I would rather have Deandre Ayton than Kristaps Porzingis, bro. What, what are we really buying into with Aiden? Like I, I think he's a fine player, but what does he really do like on an elite level besides maybe rebound? Yeah. Maybe nothing. Isn't that what you want from a center anyway? Yeah, but I, the, we're in the mid-range starters, great backups, and I think that's exactly what he is because he can play in the pick and roll. He defends the sin, he defends the rim at an adequate level. His defensive versatility is average, maybe slightly above. He sets good screens. His mid-range game isn't awesome. He can finish around the hoop well. Like mm-hmm. he's just an average center, and there's nothing wrong with that. He and he's still young. He's still going to improve, but. That's a fair tip. Yeah, I that those are good points, and we'll the this this year's playoffs could kind of change that opinion. We'll see how oh, he responds yeah. to that. But we need to be talking about Vucevic. <laughs> and okay, before the Chicago trade, I think I would have been like tearing that opinion up and with like mm-hmm. my opinion. But Chicago has been horrible, and I don't understand how you pair a supposed All Star center with Zach Levine who's been phenomenal this year and they're that bad. Like they're losing, they're just losing. Aren't they? Am I wrong? 
No, they lost to the Warriors. You know you're bad when you lose to the Warriors. <laughs> no, but yeah, they've been bad. And yeah, so how, with that in mind, how could, how can Vucevic be good? How can he be that good? Yeah, I, it's, it's funny not. because Vucevic and Levine are both players who I've been very critical of. At yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've kind of mended my fences with Levine. Vucevic, still not a fan. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not a Vucevic guy. I'll, I'll give, I'll give you my spiel. Like we can say with Rudy Gobert that he's a kind of limited center, not super versatile defensively. And I think that's true. like, he can do a little bit, but he's fairly limited. We're losing Jonah. Like An almost athletic. He's every, kind of just bound to the paint. Hey, big boy. Just repeat the last paragraph that you just said. Dude, he's Not gone. Yet, we lost. We lost don't him. Re- don't repeat it yet. <laughs> Jonah is Jonah's not with us right now. He's dropping some <laughs> serious knowledge. And he is, bro. I wish I could hear. He's freaking gone. Jonah, if you uh, can hear me, we love you. <laughs> Man, bro, he is frozen. <laughs> Jonah, I wonder if he can hear us. Jonah, if you can see us, hear us, or anything, rejoin. Sign out, rejoin. It's okay. What's up, Channon? What's going on, bro? <laughs> the Bulls are not a good basketball team, though. Oh, they're a bad basketball they, team, bro. They beat the Cavs, lost to the Grizzlies, lost to the Magic, lost to the Grizzlies, lost to the Timberwolves, lost to the Hawks, and their last win was against the Raptors on April 8th. Damn. Dude, all right. Here's a point that's good to make in this dynamic. <laughs> Steph is going crazy, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It is, I feel bad for him because if he was... In the top five in the West, clear MVP at this point. Yeah. But because of his situation, you can't really make him an MVP nope. when there's the other candidates are at the tops of their conference. You know what I, I mean? Agree. Like I with Joel and Bates at the though. top of the conference. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Every time he makes a big three, I'm going to step MVP. No, but I completely, <laughs> I completely, I completely understand that notion because it's when you're barely, when you're barely making it into the play in playoff tournament, it's hard to make a case, you know? I know it's hard to get that attention, but damn, dude, he is like, I don't understand the shots he makes, dude. We're witnessing history. Dude, that his no. hook shot from beyond the three dude, point. I line. don't understand that, bro. And but just the threes he takes where he like loses the dribble and then immediately as he's like regathering the dribble is pulling up into a shot and he makes yeah. it a three. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how you can do that. And here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. So an example. I, a lot of times when I'm shooting hoops, I mimic Clay Thompson's shot because it's such a textbook shot. Yep. And I feel like that's like, if you're going to mimic a player's shot, that's the guy you should learn from because his shoulder's so square. Mm-hmm. His, it's such a straight line movement. But Steph's isn't really something you can mimic. It's so it's like fluid. It's really fluid. It just goes straight up. Yeah. And it's, it's honestly not a good shot to try to mimic. Like fundamentally, I don't think it'll help you trying to shoot like Steph as it will trying to shoot like Clay. But Steph is so butter. It's so crazy. Yeah, he just plays to his um, frame and just his skill set so well. Like he doesn't, I don't know, he's, he's just so good. It's insane. And the shots, the confidence he has is ridiculous. No, I think that's a big part of it too. It's like he just knows that. He just knows what he can do, I guess. And like he's the winning that he's done has gotten him all this confidence even on a losing team, he like feels like a winner, and so he's just throwing shit up and, and he goes in. Exactly. It his ability to finish too, I feel like is kind of underrated. The uh, yeah. his, his well, it's ba- just because he has such crazy touch. His touch off the glass is ridiculous. He's just he has floaters that I'm like, that's too high. That's rimming out. No, he yeah. I think he's button. the only shooter where his shooting is so special that it translates to finishing, if that makes sense, just because his hand mm-hmm. and the ball. Their relationship is so good. Hey, we were just uh, we were praising Stephen Curry <laughs> since we're talking about centers. Uh, okay, where were we? What I, was, I completely lost my train of thought. What were we talking about before? Oh, we were talking. You were talking about Vucevic being like um, limited and like you know what I mean. Oh, sure, yeah. So I think yeah, we were talking about it with Gobert. He uh, he really mostly plays drop coverage, and he might have a little bit more versatility within that system because he's a little bit like faster so he can get out and kind of hedge up the screen and drop back to the rim. Vucevic, he's pretty much just bound to the paint and 
he doesn't even defend the rim well. Like when Vucevic is in, no, he's horrible. Teams are teams are going to get shots up at the rim. Um, here I can pull up those stats really, really quick. Um, and what you do get with Vucevic is you get three point shooting. Like he's a forty percent three point shooter, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. But he's not a great passer. He's not a guy you run your offense no. through like Nikola Jokic. Um, much is made of his touch around the basket. But I mean, I agree. Ro- Robin Robin Lopez shoots a better percentage from floater range than Vucevic Whoa. does with his like funky little hook shot. So like the jump shot doesn't really translate to more points, and he never gets to the line. So he's really not an extremely efficient offensive player. Like sure, he makes a lot of threes, but he kind of cancels that out with an inefficient mid range game. Well, yeah, and also like it, it it reaches a point where like you can be really good at one thing. But if your game has just such huge holes, mm-hmm. it, that doesn't matter that much. Like mm-hmm. if you have, okay, let, let's say, yeah, you shoot 40% from three as a big, but at, anyone can score on you. So what is that? If you can make a three and then they come back and get a layup, what's that matter? You know what I mean? Right. And here, here I got the stat. Um, during his time in Orlando this season, opponent shot 7% better at the rim when he was in the game. That's third percentile in the NBA. During his during his time in Chicago so far, opponents have shot six point eight percent better at the rim. That's four per, fourth percentile in the NBA. So yeah, so yeah, just such miserable rim protection numbers for Vucevic. And when you're pretty much bound to the paint on defense and you can't even do that well, like that's no, disturbing. no, dude. I'm I would. This is. Yeah, dude, this completely, honestly, this conversation completely changed my opinion about Vucevic because I, I put him as an all-star when we were doing our predictions, I think, actually. But I think he is the prime example of someone who gets empty stats. Like, he can, he scores, but, like, he's one of those players where if he's not doing the scoring, someone else is just going to do it. It yeah. doesn't, it's not necessarily that meaningful, like, because, yeah. yeah. And don't get me wrong, like 40% from three, that's awesome. It's also probably primed for regression. But if it's sustainable, it's super awesome. But when when you can't when you can't really pass it that well, like he's an above average passing center, but you're not running your offense through him. So he can't really pass it. He's not really efficient from the mid-range or close to the basket co- compared to other centers. He's not efficient from the mid-range or close well, yeah, to the basket. Yeah. Uh, he never gets to the line. And so we, he becomes less of an offensive center and more of a center who can make threes. And yeah. there, there is inherent value there. Like he spaces the floor. That makes things easier for other guys. But that's why he's but, the 16th center and not the – Yeah, third. because is that more value – there is value, like you said, but is that value more than having – a better rounded center who's worse at making threes. I don't think so. Yeah. I, yeah and I, I would agree. Like, yeah, I think we've said what we need to about Vucevic. Honestly, he's a guy who I could see falling down this list, especially um, considering like you were saying, Shannon, the early returns in Chicago haven't been great. He will never be an all-star again. I'll tell you that much. I, I think that's fair. And they gave up two first round picks and Wendell Carter to acquire him. Plus, he's not young. And, and yeah, and he's not young. He's in his 30s. And I don't know why they thought acquiring him makes sense at all. We talked about that, I think, but that makes no sense. Yeah, especially when the opportunity cost is now they're not going to have cap space to go out and sign a free agent this summer. So. <laughs> and they gave up two first round picks for that privilege. And yeah. Levine's going to be out for COVID for the next two weeks. And so they might Perfect. not be- game this year so Perfect. dark times in chicago i'm glad i'm not a bulls fan i'd be cursing my front office um not, <laughs> not getting a job in the front office lasers hit any home runs at the trade deadline but i think ah, dude. i think it's safe to say we fared better than chicago um Mormon? yeah yes yeah, so i think well, that's another conversation no, no, go, ahead. go ahead finish no it's unrelated bro i just i think that terry stotts is beefing with blazer players I don't think him and Gary got along. I think that's – I thought that – remember he was talking about not feeling appreciated. I think it yeah. was from Terry. I think that's I think that's the case. And then – And we're seeing – Derek didn't play tonight. Yeah. And, and he wasn't rested. He just – he got benched. Yeah. And then in Gary's post-game press conference after he dropped the 44-point game, um, the reporter said, Gary, what – 
what about being on the Raptors allowed you to do this? And he's like, oh, just having the coach and staff believe in me. So, yeah, there you go, dude. I, I, wow. I think, yeah, I don't That's freaking, frustrating. I want, um, what's her name from San Antonio, the assistant coach? Becky Hammond. Yeah. That's that what would be, I want. That would be sick. Do it. That'd be That's sick. That's what I want. Yeah. And so the other guys we've got in this tier, Christian Wood, he, he's a prime candidate to move up this list. Like, Ooh. yes, he is. Ooh. Yeah. I haven't seen enough from him yet. Like he just hasn't played enough and he's always been on like crappy teams. So he'll tell you who he is. He is too. Didn't he tell you, didn't he say he was like supposed to be an all-star or something like that? Like he should have been. He has had some funny quotes this year. Cause he also said that there wasn't enough ball movement on the Rockets, which can be translated as there's not enough ball movement to Christian Wood on the Rockets. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, he's an intriguing center because he can hit threes. He actually has got some stuff off the dribble. Like he's pretty athletic. He likes to, he can get yeah. to the, he can get to the rim. He can get to the pull up mid range. That really early season game, not the first one, not the second game of the season, but the Blazers had a game in like January against the Rockets and Christian Wood had a huge game there. And um, he was tearing us up. Yeah. 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 He's a very talented young guy. He's a little bit too skinny. In my opinion, um, he's not a very you good rebounder. Fix that. Yeah, and he's and he's got fine shot blocking instincts. I'm not going to say he has great defensive instincts, but I mean he can block shots. And so, yeah, I think there's hope for him on that end. I'd still put him at slightly below average defensively. He's sick. Yeah, Jakob Pearl at 15. Bro, he but, impressed me when the Blazers played, dude. That's I was not like, bad, Damn. huh? He's a dude. Him, him and Eubanks, bro. They've got something kind of cool going on in San Antonio with their settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jakob Pertl, he's just a wonderful, wonderful rim protector. Oh, yeah, he blocks a ton of shots. He's impossible to score on, and he just gobbles up rebounds. He's just a brick wall at I the rim. And him. He, James he, Wiseman's got that boy's number. Yes, sir. James Wiseman sucks, dude. Why? No. How did the Spurs? I, I Flashback, flashback. We'll I was talking Wiseman. about James Wiseman had a good game against the Spurs, and Shannon's like, well, who's one of the centers on the Spurs? I say, Jakob Pertl, and you're like, who even is that? And now we're <laughs> talking about him. Okay, wait. How did San Antonio spank Phoenix the day yes. after playing us in a close game? I was I, like, okay, the, I, I was like, Devin Booker probably didn't play. They played. Yeah, and Chris Paul played. Phoenix had yeah. their full covered of players. I actually am excited. I haven't gotten around to it, but I'm actually planning to go back and watch that one because it is just such a striking result when you look at the yeah, score. Bro. And, and it I'm, looked like it looked like one of the ones where San Antonio just like established themselves early because looking at the box score, it looked like Phoenix's stars only played like 20, 25 minutes. So I imagine it yeah. was like an early blowout. Yeah, I'm probably not. I'm probably not going to watch that whole game, but I want to go back and like see the first quarter to see what happened when San Antonio really took control of that game. Yeah, dude, I don't know. So yeah, yep. We've got we've talked. Um, this will be the last tier where we kind of talk about every player individually, and then we can just start moving on to just names that stick out. But at 18, I have Robin Lopez. I love Robin Lopez. Like, dude, I think- yeah. When the Blazers played the Wizards, I was like, damn, Robin. Like, did not know that was in there still. He is just a force rebounding the ball. Like, his individual rebounding numbers are never impressive. But, boy, can that guy just box out. Like, it is a clinic. It's so impressive. And his floater, it's so funky. But he just hits an incredible amount with that weird little sweeping side-armed hook shot. Like, it's yeah. so weird, but <sighs> yeah. he made- Except he sets just physical body blows of screens. Like he lays some wood out there. And then he also protects the rim. Like he's so hard to score in at the rim. Like um, the Robin Lopez, he would be up with like his brother and Clint Capel. Like he would be a tier two center if, but he can only play 20 minutes a game. Like he just doesn't. Yeah, play bro. As he used to. And his canter has been great for us this year, but imagine how good. Lopez this season would have been for us off yeah. the bench. Yeah. I think it kind of raised some eyebrows when the Wizards gave him seven million this offseason. I I think he's worth that. He's I yeah. I love Robin Lopez. Like um and I knew I loved Robin Lopez, but then when I made this list, this just kind of reaffirmed it. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the league. Like yeah, he, he really is. He's awesome. That's a good player. take. If if he could 
if he could play more than 20 minutes a game, and maybe he can, I, I don't know, but he's he's getting a little older. So I think it's fair to say maybe, maybe his days as like a 30 minute a game starter are behind them. But as a backup, as a starter who only plays 20 yes. minutes, you're not, not going to do better than Robin Lopez. No, especially like even as he keeps getting older, bro, like there's some teams where they're they're looking for their center to play 30 minutes a game. So he can come in and give you 10, 15 solid ones holding yeah. down the defense and getting rebounds. And I think um, there's an interesting – this is an interesting discussion too because certain rim protection ages better than others. Like a guy like Capella, I don't think he'll age well because he's a little bit undersized and so much of his rim protection comes from athleticism and shot blocking. A guy like, um, let's say, Mark Gasol or Robin Lopez, who are just super physical guys at the rim, like I think that ages a lot better because, if anything, they're getting stronger as they get older. Yeah. That's kind of the main skill they use. Those big body guys, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah, so I'm a huge Lopez guy. And then Daniel Tice rounds out this tier. I, the man. I think he's just a really smart basketball player. Like his help defense is really impressive. Like he's six, eight, but he blocks a ton of shots. He's always in the right position. He's pretty mobile too. Like he can get out and hedge on the screen. He's not a full on switch defender. He can switch maybe in late clock situations, but it's not like his forte. But I, I just think he's just a very solid defensive guy. Like not, he just doesn't get out of position. He doesn't really make mistakes. And on offense, I think he's maybe, he doesn't really do anything great on offense, but he's like adequate at a lot of things. Like he he'll can, get some cleanup buckets and stuff like that. Yeah, and he, he can hit mid rangers. He shoots like thirty percent from three, so he can space the floor maybe like at a seventieth percentile clip for centers. His screens are fine. He rolls to the basket well, but he's not exactly a high flyer, which kind of limits what he can do in the pick yeah. and roll. But yeah, I think he's just kind of a really well rounded player who doesn't make mistakes on defense, and I think guys who don't make mistakes on defense are kind of limited as we um, get down this list, especially considering the versatility Tice has. I think the Celtics are going to rue the day where they traded Daniel Tice. Yeah. I think he would have, they they won yesterday. I think Daniel Tice would have helped them a lot when Stephen Curry was detonating. Yeah. Wait, is Tristan Thompson their center? Yep. Yep, now tri- I actually think in high leverage um, minutes, we're going to see him do what they did last year in the Raptors series, which was going with Grant Williams at center. I think that's a good look for He's a Celtics. bruiser. He has threes too. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing with Tice too. Like he fouls a little bit too much. So, which kind of limits the amount. It's like Zach Collins play. back in the days when he was on the court. We'll get, we'll get to Zach Collins. I still have a sliver of hope left for oh, Zach. I forgot about so him. He, We'll get to him. All right. It's easy to forget about. It's been several (laughs) years. Yeah. So there are 19 guys in my list or in my tier four, low end starters, solid backups. I'll just read them all off. Then we can talk about the interesting names at the end. Or actually just interrupt me. Just interject if you hear a guy you want to talk about. I'll I'll read them off. Um, Jarrett Allen, Chris Boucher, Montrez Harrell, Serge Ibaka, Avica Zubats, Stephen Adams, Nerlens Noel, Kavon Looney, Dwight Howard, Mark Gasol, Nick Claxton, Ernest mm. Cantor, Isaiah Stewart, Mitchell Robinson, Thomas Bryant, Robert Williams, Mason Plumley, Wendell Carter Jr., JaVale McGee. Dude, there's some solid ass players in that tier. The the Come thing on. is, there was players I wanted to interrupt, but that we've already like made points about them on the pod. I feel like like we've talked about um, just like how huge adding Sergi Baca should could potentially be and has been for the Clippers. Mm-hmm. And then, um, dude, I'm je- I'm kind of jealous of Toronto, bro. With Chris Boucher, Gary Trent Jr., the OG, is bro. Right. The future is bright in Toronto, bro. Yeah. It was just a crazy moment for me, just as a say, or as a little tangent, to see Gary Trent get guarded by Lou Dort today. Just because you think back to like when he was on the Blazers, like Lou Dort was guarding Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum probably had the second best perimeter defender. And, Damn, bro. And Gary probably had like Teo Maladon on him. And just like now he's being guarded by the best guard defenders in the entire nba so just kind of 
where he's gone now as a player. Yeah, is that's pretty cool. That's crazy. Did you guys see when uh, Boucher hit that clutch three and then ran into OKC's coach? Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Off the Gary assist. Yeah, I was sick. Oh yeah, I saw that, bro. And he was oh, it made me so mad. He was attacking the paint so nice, bro. Like I said, he couldn't do. Damn, it's Terry's fault. The one that got away. Maybe. Yeah, so you brought up Serge Ibaka. I've been a little bit disappointed. He's had these lingering back issues this year, and he, yeah. he looks a little bit um, different. He looks, he's, he looks like he's might be dwindling to a close. He's definitely not the athletic room protector he was in his OKC. Day. Yeah, no. In the freaking this championship season, he would have been way higher Ooh. on this list. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say prime Serge Ibaka. He's up there with, like, Miles Turner and Rashawn Holmes yeah. up in that tier two. Last year, Abaka, even on the Raptors, he's probably in the tier above. But, and I, I still like him because, I mean, I think I, he's still a really valuable center, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, all things considered. And I think maybe if he can put these back issues behind him, but I, he's just looked a little bit washed up this year and just a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, a, I feel like hopefully when playoff time comes around, he might be able to dig down and kind of bring some of that beast back out, but we'll see. I really hope so. And because I do think he would make a huge difference for the Clippers. And they also have a Vita Zubats who's in this tier as well. Um, yeah. This he's past kind of just like five. Never mind. Yeah. A Vita Zubats, like he's just, I hate to say it, but he's just kind of a boring player. I feel oh, like. super boring, bro. He just kind of, does that he's just kind of okay like yeah the one thing i'll say about zubats is he like flubs some easy shots at the rim sometimes but he's a wonderful rebounder he sets like good screens he's yeah. really not athletic but he's like a big body at the rim so he can deter some shots he's not a great shot blocker but yeah that's i don't know not much to say about zubats um kellen do you want to talk about kavon looney Oh, get those offensive Looney boards. Tunes. Get those putbacks, baby. Let's go. Let me pull some. Dude, he's been ferocious last couple of games getting offensive rebounds, extending possessions, getting multiple opportunities to let Steph shoot his three ball. And also clutch putbacks. Like when we're down low or something and somebody misses a shot, he's always there. And he's just been massive for us, especially because Draymond, he gets a little outside sometimes playing the five, even though he's physical. But without Wiseman, it's Kevon Looney or bust because we don't one, have a five one of the, except Allen. One of the things that was striking to me as they did my research for this podcast was I was going over Kevon Looney's defensive Raptor for the past like five or six seasons. And the thing that really stuck out to me was that in 2018-19, he was one of the best defensive centers in the league. 2019-20, he was like a really solid defensive center uh, or not 2019, 20, sorry. That was the year he didn't play. So 2017, 2018, he was an elite defensive center, 2018, 19. He was still a really great defensive center. He was a the, big part of our run in the playoffs this year. He's slightly above average defensively. So he went from elite to pretty good. And I don't think he's it's gotten worse. Injuries, though. I don't, I don't think he's gotten worse. I just think the Warriors personnel has gotten a lot worse. And I think Kabam Looney, his skill set really fits into teams with elite defensive personnel because he's so versatile yeah. and he can switch and he can like defend on the perimeter, but still defend the paint. He, and get rebounds. Uh, he's, yeah. He's a good fit on yeah. the Warriors though. Cause he doesn't have to handle any of the offensive load. Like that's just not his game, you know, like, Oh, yeah. right. But I, I think like if he was on a team, I think if he had better defensive teammates or not better, cause the Warriors have good defenders, but if he yeah. had like more versatile defensive teammates, I think, like, like if he if he played on the Brooklyn Nets, like if if you replaced anybody on the Brooklyn, Nets if you replaced good. Nick Claxton with Kevon Looney, <laughs> I think I think like ESPN would be like singing Looney's praises from the rooftops, like the Looney Tune. <laughs> yeah, I, I, because I think Looney, he's an awesome defensive player. Right, so I like yo, him. he just runs like a seventy year old man. You guys remember uh, Festus Azili? Yes. Yeah. Best Bro, and he was like this? kind of a beast, and then he got traded to the Blazers, and I was like, okay, let's go. And then he never played. What about Kent Bazemore? Absolutely dead eye sniper from beyond the arc. Clean a shot on the on one of the cleaner shots in the must West. be talking about a different Kent Bazemore. No, I'm talking about the Kent Bazemore. Kent Bazemore. I know. 
on the Golden State That's Warriors. That's not the Cam Bazemore Rip yeah, City I- knows. <laughs> Wait, Jonah, what did he do that made you say he's an ass? Or what did you say? Didn't you say like I just He's done a lot. Oh, um he got he got a technical. Oh, what did he do? I was I was switching back and forth between UFC, the Giants, and NBA. Uh he was just complaining towards the refs. It was towards the very end of the first half. Yeah. But to counter your point, low key, about our defensive players and stuff no like, i'm not saying the warriors are bad like we, the warriors they're one of the top defense. aren't we top 10 in defense yeah they're a really good defensive team it's just they don't they don't really play to like looney's strength they don't do like a lot of switching and a lot of like that scheme versatile sort true of thing. yeah speaking so, of I, playing I it to strengths another person in this tier and his canter bro there's mm-hmm. times i swear we could run the ball down the floor and get it to Cantor, and he's going to put it in 70% yeah. of the time. Yeah. And there's times when our offense is so cold, and I'm like, why not just give it to Ennis Cantor? Mm-hmm. And it's so frustrating, bro. It's so frustrating. No, I agree. Especially considering most of the backup centers he goes against, like, he could just consume them. Yes, he has some of the best touch. Dude, like, there's plays when we play the Jazz, and he just tears up Rudy Gobert, bro, with his little – He's got great footwork and, like I said, good touch. Ah, it's so frustrating. He, yeah, he's a terrible defender, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Channon, this is your guy, and you you were on him way before any of us. So I'll let you talk about him. But Nick Claxton, number thirty on the list, Nick big riser. Claxton. You know the weird thing is, someone I don't remember how I got on this way of thinking, but um, when he was, I don't know if he was a rookie or what, but I. Well, how, how, what year is he in right now? Isn't this just his sophomore year? If I'm okay. Right yeah. Right. So it was when KD was on the nets, but he wasn't playing yet. And someone's like something about Nick Claxton kind of reminded me of KD, like the way he was moving or something like that. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Like he's a center. And I was just like, that's kind of sick or something. And then he, I think I was watching them and he had like an actually impressive game. And I was like, damn. And so I was kind of riding off that. Yeah. And that was my opinion on him. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then he's kind of been showing those stripes lately. He's going to be huge for them. I think, especially yeah. in the playoffs, just his ability to switch and guard a lot of players. I, the, the time that really like when I was like sold on Claxton was seeing him guard CJ McCollum in that game. Yeah. The Blazers, Cause he just got, he's so shifty. got some of the best handles in the league. We talked about it all the time and Claxton just stonewalled him. Yeah, no, yeah, I think um, that's something a lot of the people have been criticizing about the Nets is, like, their rim protection. Like, they have DJ who's kind of washed. But, um, yeah, bro, you got this young guy, Claxton. Yeah. Potential, lots of potential there. Yeah, I think he could be huge. I think the big thing against Claxton, he's just kind of small, light in the shorts. Like, he's not going to play a he, No, definitely, yeah. He's not going to play in a 76ers series. That's oh, really God. Good. Oh God, no! Uh, his offensive, like this, is the tough thing about evaluating a lot of the Nets players. Like his offense has been pretty good, and he's been really efficient around the basket, but he doesn't really do much. So, how good would he really be offensively if he's not playing with like the best offensive players of all time? Like, yeah, bro, I promise, I'm averaging ten a game if you put me on the Nets roster. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I think wide Boston, open. He's he's going to be an insanely valuable player for the Nets this year. Like I think he's going to be kind of one of their X factors in the playoffs this year. This year, yeah. But like, if you dropped him on the I don't know, just a random team. Like if you put him on the Indiana Pacers, like is he I don't is he really helping them that much? I mean, maybe maybe actually maybe he could help the Pacers a little bit. But my point is like, um, if you dropped him on most teams, like. For most teams in the league, I'd probably rather have like Ennis Cantor or Dwight Howard. Or yeah, no, oh, yeah. The, the Nets are one of those situations that the Warriors were for a long time where they make any player look better because the surrounding yeah. cast is so impressive. And um, that and with a surrounding cast that has like um, so much talent, you can afford to have players with really specific deficiencies if yeah. they really excel in a certain skill like Claxton he's so mobile and he's got such good feet for a center and the Nets are willing to absorb all of his shortcomings in other areas because 
that one skill is so good, whereas maybe other teams wouldn't have like the roster to absorb some of Claxton's weaknesses. Good point. So, Definitely. Yeah, I think yeah. the Nets can could make a lot of players look better than they maybe are. And that could be the case with Nick Claxton, but yeah. Yeah. And he's still young too. So that's just yeah. another thing. Bro, does um, sub does a bonus count as a center? That yeah, that's a good point. He was on the borderline for me. I just he really I feel like I feel like I wouldn't just because of Miles Turner being on the on the team. You know? Yeah, that's kind of the tiebreaker for me too. Yeah. But I mean, he's center height. I think on a lot of teams, he probably would place. Where would he there. place? Tier three. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'd say probably tier two. He'd be French with cat. No, I. I'd probably no, not that two. tier. Tier two probably is a have It goes I'd, tier one, cat, tier three. Okay, then tier three. I'd probably have him in tier four. I'd probably have him like between Pertle and Vucevic. Wait, name the bottom. Damn, name what? Damn, damn. He's just another take. one where I think like the defense is just, it's just not there. And I think he looks a lot better because he plays with one of the best run protectors in the NBA. That's fair. I think so. I think it's definitely better than Vucevic, more valuable than Vucevic. And his, his offense is fine. Like he, he passes really well for a center or power forward, but he can't really shoot threes. His mid ranger is just okay. He's really good at posting up against smaller defenders, but he looks terrible if he ever tries to post up against like a Jonas Valanciunas. Mm-hmm. Or he basically dominates any player that's smaller than him, but any player that's bigger than him, he just becomes completely ineffective. So, so he needs he needs a bigger player next to him in order to get those smaller matchups. Yeah, I think I think that's the case. But um, also, though, like even with Miles Turner, like a lot of times people put people play um, Sabonis with their center and Miles Turner with their power forward just because yeah, Turner, yeah. Turner is more of an outside shooting type of guy. He doesn't get a lot of rebounds. But I, I think your point is super um, valid, like on defense, because I think Turner, I think Turner really compensates for Sabonis on defense. So yeah, we'll talk about Sabonis when we do power forwards, but I wouldn't be super high on him as a center and probably not super high on him as a power forward. I think he's another one of these kind of, I don't want to say fake all-stars, but him and Vucevic, I personally wouldn't have voted them. Fluke all-stars. Yeah. Or maybe just all-stars. Based one on and Dunners. How many points per game they score. Um, yeah. So yeah. Are you guys ready? Dad for all-stars. The, yeah. Are you guys ready for the next year from 39 to 54? Damn, yeah. This time I'll, Wait, read that's only them, I'll read through them fast and then we'll talk about all the names at the end. All right, 39, DeAndre Jordan, Derek Favors, Kim Birch, Bismack Biombo, Tristan Thompson, Alex Lynn, Hassan Whiteside, Jackson Hayes, Willie Cauley-Stein, Cody Zeller, Dwayne Dedman, John Henson, DeMarcus Cousins, Gorgie Dang, Taj Gibson, Dwight Powell. I was watching the, the game today, the Knicks and the Pelicans. Great game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't like Jackson Hayes very much, dude. I'm not very impressed with him, honestly. I feel like something uh, – I don't know. I don't, I'm not impressed with the way he moves defensively. What is he viewed as? Is he viewed as more defensive or offensive? I'm not that familiar with him. When he was coming out, people thought he was going to be like this Clint Capella, just like this super athletic guy who could block a lot of shots at the rim and then be like an insane alley threat on offense. Yeah, so he's definitely athletic but I, it doesn't look like he understands how to play defense that well. Bro, like, yeah, that's completely his, right. His body control and footwork does not set him up to make plays at the rim at all. And um, I just feel like he's an oversized um, bad guard, honestly, with, with no guard skills yeah, um, because he doesn't, he doesn't have defensive center, like um, the IQ, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. missing. He yeah, looks lost. He looks lost on defense as a center, I feel like. Yeah, I think that's a, lot a of the really time. good assessment. Yeah, his defense. Um, and it's just so frustrating because he has the skills to be a good defensive center if he could ever, like, get it together. But, yeah, you're completely yeah. right. Um, the reason I had him in this tier is just because I think he has a lot of potential on offense. Like, here, I'll pull up the stats from, but he shoots. Yeah, in- he's had some explosive dunks. I know that. Like, he's yeah. definitely been impressive. And some explosive blocks, too. It's just. Yeah. And he, he just dunks everything, which helps him a lot too. Like he's just an insane finisher at, at the rim. Um, yeah. He makes 72% of his shots there, which 
that's not super impressive, but he also takes 79% of his shots at the rim. So he just takes all of his shots at the rim and he converts a pretty good percentage of him. But yeah, I think, yeah. I think you're right. I think his defense probably hurts a little bit. Although the Pelicans, they have been better defensively when yeah. he's been on the floor. Um, looks like they force a few more turnovers when he's out there, which honestly, that's probably not really Jackson Hayes. That's not really yeah. true about it. Yeah, and opponents are shooting 4% better at the rim when Hayes is out there. That's not very good. Um, he fouls quite a bit. Uh, doesn't. Yeah. Not, not really an impressive rebounder. No. Yeah, there. I was I was watching him more than other players today. Another. I mean, maybe we should have. Yeah, to talk so about this I think later, you might but, be right. I think yeah. I think Jackson. He could probably move down this list. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're kind of getting down there, anyways. To be fair, but yeah. yeah. Okay, wait, quick, quick sidebar. I was thinking about this also. I wonder what Zion's role would look like on a team with like several other good players. You know what I mean? Because he's such a unique player. I don't really know if I can see him as the first option on like a really good team. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah. I don't know if maybe he's more valuable just being used as like someone you can throw the ball to to dominate their way to a bucket instead of like your like number one offensive creator. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just a thought I had. Yeah. I think if anything, like maybe somewhere in the middle, like maybe like a Giannis type of player where if he gets the rebound, you're more than happy to have him kind of push the ball up in transition. And there are certain points in the game where like having him as the ball handler is like a desirable way to run the offense, but you kind of need that half court point guard to kind of calm yeah. things down and like run a pick and roll for you every once in a while. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that's, a, he's, it's just so hard to tell with him because he's just improving at such a rapid rate. And during this time when they've had a bunch of injuries and he has been like running point guard, like he's done a pretty good job. And so I, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah. He, I mean, he was making plays today, definitely, but yeah, he had a big game. Yeah. That'll, nice. be, that'll be fun when we get to the power forward rankings yeah. and get to talk about him a little bit. Draymond. Okay, so um, who else on that list, on that um, tier, that you want to talk about? Um, I mean, there's – I don't like Derek Favors. I think that might surprise – I think just think he looks kind of washed up this year. Like, yeah. He's just so unathletic at this point, and he was already kind of undersized. I'm just – I'm just kind of – Wasn't there kind of like some like – at the beginning of the season, there was like some impressive like stuff from him, and then he's kind of just been like maybe like washed up now. Yeah, and the defense is still good when he's on the floor. Yeah. But I and the, I just think he fits Quinn Snyder's system so well, and they're so familiar with him. And then going off of how he played in New Orleans last year in the bubble, where he was so terrible and he looked so washed up, I just think his star is kind of falling. Um, yeah, definitely. Cody Zeller, I actually think he might be a tier above if he wasn't always hurt, but I actually think I like the way he plays. Honestly, I don't, bro. Oh, really? I almost texted that today because I was kind of getting the same vibes where I was like look, watching him and I'm like, what are you doing? But then like a few minutes after I was thinking about that, he had that nice spin move on uh, Nurk. I don't know if you saw that play. Yeah. That was a nice take, but there was a couple of times when I was like, that dude doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, I just think – He's just kind of a solid. He, I think he sets good screens. He passes well. I just, I, and he's got decent touch on like his hook shots and stuff. I, ju- I just think he's kind of a, he's a solid offensive big man. And he's like seven. Yeah. And yeah, he's not going to kill you defensively, but he's not going to help you. Like, I think he'd be a low end starter, solid backup, but he's always injured. So I put him in the fine backup. Category. Yeah. So yeah. Makes I sense. Don't, I don't really have I have too much to say about these guys. I think we better just kind of go through the rest of the list really quickly, and then we can get to some more macro takes at the end. Okay. Uh, so tier six, I've got two tiers left. Tier six is unproven slash severe weaknesses. So either guys that I kind of like, but they oh, never play. Go. Um, here we so go. So yeah, I'll just go through these guys. Okay. <laughs> Naz Reed, Zach Collins, Xavier Tillman, Moses Brown, Daniel Gafford, Mo Bamba, Harry Giles, Drew Eubanks, Goga Batadze, Andre Drummond. Oh, Freak, yes. Hell yeah, dude. Andre Drummond sucks, bro. I yeah. completely forgot about him. Let's go, dude. There's that a is a good this? take. 
Yeah, there's a tier. There's one more tier. I want to hear the title for the tier below. <laughs> no, so, no, yeah. Andre Drummond is um, not very good, bro. He does not. I don't think he adds much value to a team, and I'm sure you have that same opinion is why you put him yeah, as low as you did. What, but. what he does well is is really rebound because his rim protection, yeah. he's – He's never on good defenses. He doesn't really prevent shots at the rim or he blocks some shots, but opponents tend to shoot better when he's at the rim. So what he really does is rebound. And yeah. when you look at, and when you look at um, his history throughout the league, it's a pretty mixed bag. Like he's been on some teams where they rebound better when he's on the floor. And he's been on some teams where they rebound a lot worse when he's on the floor. And basically what that tells me is he's good at getting rebounds for himself, but he doesn't really help his team rebound, which is kind yes, of like bro. He's like the anti Robin Lopez. Robin Lopez, he doesn't get a lot of rebounds for himself, but he bought no. his teammates and his team always rebounds better when he's on the floor. Andre Drummond, he'll go up and get a board, but he doesn't really contribute to team rebounds. No. Yeah, Andre Drummond's bad, bro. Good take. He, he is a liability on offense. He turns the ball over yes. and his shot selection's terrible. He takes a He bunch does of- not know what he's doing on offense at all. <laughs> he takes a bunch of terrible hook shots. He makes weird passes. He oh, God, he's so over. bad. And he can't hit free throws. He's like a 50 or 60% free throw shooter. So teams can just send him to the line and count on him missing his shots. So, yeah, he's a, he, is, he is a pretty terrible. The Lakers have hugely downgraded their centers, in my opinion, from Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee. Yeah. yeah. I, I would have to agree. I like both of those guys better than a lot of what they have on the roster right now. Certainly better yeah. than Andre Drummond. I think Montrez Harrell has filled in admirably while Anthony Davis has been hurt. But I was talking to Callum before the show. You're not signing guys in the offseason based on who you want to fill in for Anthony Davis during 10 games in the regular season. You're signing them yeah. based on who you want in the Western Conference Finals. So Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Um, so and Montrez Harrell lost in the playoffs last year. So uh... yeah, it was awful. And there were there were some there were What's up? Jonas having Nothing. technical difficulties at the moment. He will be back with Fair. us shortly. Does very well. Say that again. Yeah, I said I, I, I'm, willing, I'm willing to give him another chance, but I just don't think that archetype, like undersized center, does very well. But he has been defending better with Frank Vogel as his coach. So we'll see. I think the jury, I'm, I'm not a Harrell fan, but I'm willing to say the jury's still out because he has made some strides forward this year. So I'm excited to see what he looks like in the playoffs. My hopes aren't high, but I'm willing to be surprised. I hope he surprises me. All right. So we'll we'll get to the last year. The last year. Wait, let me guess the title. Busts. (laughs) No, the the seventh tier is not currently, not currently the keyword here. Not fringe. Not currently good enough to play in the minutes. Fringe division one player. Fringe burger flippers. (laughs) And so this tier is the bottom 15 players on the list uh, and in order, but really loose order. Cause I mean, at this point you're just kind of like, yeah, who really yeah. cares who, but the guys are wait, actually we haven't talked about Zach Collins yet. Right? He was on the tier above. This. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay. So here's the thing. Zach has such a good like tenacity in the way he plays. He wants to win and you see that. And that's, I think what drives him, He's always had been in foul trouble is what it feels like to me when he's on the court is he's always in foul trouble, but he desperately wants to stop people from scoring. He showed a, he's shown very impressive um, mid range shooting ability. Yeah. Um, even extending it to the three point line, honestly. even extending it to the three point line. But I love that little, um, it's so hard to remember. It's been so long, but I, I think he had like a little short corner shot. He would have hit, mm-hmm. but or like extended baseline jumper, but He's, he definitely sh- was showing potential, but he cannot get on. He can't even – it's not even about staying on the court. It's about getting on the court. Yeah. And the reason he's in the top of this tier for me and not the middle of the bottom tier is he had some real game-changing defensive moments in that series against the Nuggets. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, he has a lot of potential as a defensive center if he was yeah. healthy. He's, he's honestly a guy I could see rise up this list. Yes, yeah. I agree. All right. So n- now sorry to tease everybody with the seventh list so, <laughs> or with tier seven, tier seven, not currently good enough to play real NBA minutes from 65 to 79. 
James Wiseman, Willie Hernan Gomez, Isaiah Hardenstein, Mo Wagner, Aaron Baines, Frank Kaminsky, Luke Cornett, Boban Marjanovic, Tony Bradley, Ed Davis, Jalil Okafor, Bruno Fernando, Chimezi Metu, Onyeka Okungwu, Cristiano Felicia. Dude, Ed Davis James was... Wiseman? Yeah. What Ed Davis that? was fun back in the day on the Blazers. Yeah. He used to be a bully. He was really good. It's crazy how quickly he's fallen off. Because that was, what yeah. was that, like three years ago? Yeah, yeah. He was big off the bench for us. He did a lot of what Cantor does. He was just such a beast on the offensive rebound. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say he was oh, quite a bit better defensively than Cantor was. Much better. He maybe Definitely. wasn't quite the score around the basket that NSF yeah. like he, which I think when you get as many offensive rebounds, it helps to have that touch to immediately convert those to baskets. But, but I mean, you know, they, was, they say that it's offensive rebounds are the best time to shoot three. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. And he, he could make those. He, he was pretty good with those little kickout passes. So yeah. Yeah. James Wiseman, we've talked about him a lot on the pod, but um, I think he might find success as like an, pick and roll big man because he's athletic he's got that big wingspan he can get up for some pretty crazy alley-oops he's almost like Giannis like in the sense that he can dunk from places you wouldn't expect someone to dunk from like he can just like pick the ball up at the elbow and take one step and all of a sudden he's dunking on someone which is pretty spectacular but he looked completely lost on defense any efficiency he gets by um, converting shots at the rim he immediately wipes that out by taking (laughs) rangers and three-pointers I honestly think making a bunch of those three pointers at the beginning of the year was the worst thing that could have happened to him because he started thinking those were good shots for him and he's <laughs> they That's facts. But yeah, um, I think the defense more than anything, he started to show flashes before he got hurt of maybe like switching. He can get out on the perimeter. He's got quick feet for a seven footer. I'll give him that. But yeah, he was pretty much ineffective and the fact that he's not 20 yet and is already having cartilage issues, that's very worrisome. And I could care less that he's going to be out the rest of the season. Like it honestly doesn't matter. He like the Warriors are certainly better off without him. Like it's not a coincidence that this has been their big winning streak the past couple of weeks, but I think where it really is going to hurt is him missing summer league. I think he, I think he really needed that um, time to kind of explore the studio space, just play around in a simpler system as well. Cause the Warriors, they like Steve Kerr, like I know a lot of Warriors fans on Twitter have given him a lot of crap for this. He doesn't change his system. He still plays the same offense that he ran when he had like Kevin Durant and Andre Iguodala and Draymond Green, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. Like, and that's just a hard thing for a like 19 year old rookie. who's never even played college basketball to come in and do. So it was just a really bad situation for him. Yeah. And he didn't play well at all. And now he's got like a very difficult injury to recover from. And he's not going to get summer league. This is going to be the second consecutive year where he's not going to have a real training camp. And so just, I feel for him, but yeah, just tough circumstances for why that does suck. Yeah. That sucks. But he, there's, he's not the lowest top 10 pick in 2020 on this list. Onyeka Okungwu, he was the, uh, what, what was he the sixth or seventh? He was the sixth pick this year. Yeah, the Hawks had the sixth pick. So the sixth overall pick is actually the second to last player. So not a good top 10 for centers this year. No. Right? Some centers who are a little on this list. Jalen Smith, the Suns drafted him at 10. He hasn't even played enough for me to have an opinion on him. So he didn't even make the list. <laughs> so yeah, that's. That's the top 79. Um, Kellen, do you have any Wiseman thoughts before we move into like more of a macro conversation? Tune in next year. Would you have him higher on this list based on what you've seen from him this year? He said flashes of greatness, but I mean, not a big sample size. I'm just saying, whew, Steph, Kelly, Clay, Wiseman, Draymond, uh, freaking... I mean, I, I mean, our other guys aren't too daunting of names. Oh, Jordan Poole? Oh, I don't know. Sounds like a special team to me. Next year, you're going to get Clay Thompson coming back. Um, and we're going to Ste- re-sign Kelly. Stephen Curry's clearly at the peak of his powers. Like, 
Draymond, he still has something left in the tank. Draymond's solid, dude. Like you're gonna like the Warriors, they they could be competing. They they could win a playoff series next year. I think I think that's I think that's fair to say. Watch out, Phoenix. I, Watch out, I, Phoenix. They just like, saying. So this is a team like the the Warriors, they're a team that could possibly be competing for home court advantage. Like maybe they could win a playoff series. Do you feel comfortable with Wiseman being the starting center on that team next year? Yeah, put a little meat on his bones. Clean up that mid range. Because I, 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 I wouldn't be. I no. like if I'm trying to if I'm trying to win next year, I still don't think Wiseman's going to be ready. Yeah, I think the concerning part is that he's not going to hardly be able to play before then. Yeah, like so he's going to be like, how is he supposed to be better than what he is right now? Things are going to get worse before they get better for Wiseman. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Um, so yeah, more macro thoughts. Um, who, so just based on like this past season, maybe last playoffs to where we are right now, who's, who, who's risen the most in your guys' opinions? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, wow. From how long ago? Just from the start of the playoffs last year. Um, Bam. Yeah. I think yeah, that's a great one. Um, um let's see who else is in there. Um Rashawn Holmes. Yeah, one hundred percent. Let me see. What about Miles Turner, no? Yeah, I think he probably yeah, I think. Yeah, I, th- I think he's probably risen a little bit. I think that's fair to say. Like, I would have had Chris Dobbs above him last year. Like, yeah. probably. Would yeah. Have- yeah, I think that's a good one. Let me see. Who are yours, Jonah? Yeah, I think you hit some of the important ones out of bio. Definitely. Rashawn Holmes. Definitely. You know, this is kind of weird because he's an older guy, but Robin Lopez. Because I was going to say him. Yeah, because because I don't think that his value was as like it was as clear as it is like right now, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that he ha- had that ability still, but I just wasn't like as clear to see. And, and last year he played in Milwaukee, which was perfectly set up to his strength. Um, they were the best defensive team in the league, but um, they had Giannis, who was a great rim protecting power forward. So the team he was on last year was pretty much perfectly catered to playing elite defense and perfectly catered to Robin Lopez's strength. And he was a bit raw. He was like, he like they would either go with Lo, Brooke Lopez at center or they would go small ball with Giannis at center or maybe sometimes go with Robin Lopez. So it kind of seemed like he was playing well in a tiny role that was perfectly catered this year. He's on the Washington wizards. I thought Washington was going to be the worst defense in the league. Maybe them are the Cavs. Like they've just got the shittiest personnel for defense. Yeah. And they've it's been in a, they've been in above they've been an above average defensive team when Robin. That's really team. impressive. Yeah, and so I just think it cannot be overstated. I this has turned into just like the Robin Lopez love fest, but I think he's <laughs> been phenomenal. Um, Boucher, he's risen up this. Yeah, I was going to say that one. Boucher, he's in very new development. I mean, obviously Nick Claxton as just a complete yeah. newcomer. Isaiah Stewart as a rookie, he's pretty. He's like Isaiah Stewart's the highest rookie on this Where, list, shockingly. Wasn't he gonna be a Blazer? Oh uh, no, he he got drafted with the pick that the Blazers traded. Yeah, to the okay. Blazers, he's is, the UW um, guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, those are the main. Those are the main risers. Um, Callan, do you have a riser besides Turner? That I think we kind of covered them all. Um, we covered them yeah. all, man. Yeah. Well, so, you wanna, so we get who's some- gonna be a, the biggest riser next year? Wiseman, I think that's fair to say. I, I could see that. Mm, I Maybe think that's not that, fair to say. Getting to that tier three. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I, I would be more inclined to go with Channon, but with a, such a young player who was this bad, like there's so much room for improvement. And he's actually, got, he's that got that's true. Cool. If you're at the bottom, you better be rising, bro. Like if you, Especially if, if you, if you told me, pick. if you told me next year he's better than willie collie stein like i could buy that and already that's like a two-tier improvement and so i i think he could maybe get a little better next year mm-hmm. um so yeah biggest fallers on this list um 
Well, I mean, it's hard because like the people who are low that are kind of hot takes. I mean, they, it's not like they were better before. And yeah, I mean, Sergi like Baca is a faller. Players. Yeah, Sergi Baca is a faller. That's a good one. Yeah, but he's older. Um, I mean, it's inevitable. Yeah. I mean, Hassan Whiteside kind of transitioning from being a 30 minute a game starting center to being kind of a backup for Sacramento. Like, I still think he's done fine in that role, but yeah. it's, it's pretty apparent that his days as like an innings eating center are over. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just go through a few followers on my board. Um, this guy, I think it's partly just because he's been horrific this year and then i also think i maybe overrated him a tiny bit last year but aaron baines he's fallen quite a bit um oh yeah going up the list a little bit yeah, he's been bad dude he's been, yeah he's been a train wreck they brought in kim birch finally to kind of relieve him of his duties like chris boucher had already passed him in the rotation i mean yeah, yeah i touched on his on white side Derek favors fell yeah. quite a bit to me um it's an age one too, kind of. Yeah, another age one, Mark Gasol. I still think like if they oh, yeah. if they play the Nuggets, I think Mark Gasol is going to be a huge key for the Lakers in that series. Like not it's... that the Lake, not that the Lakers would have ran into or, or would have um would have struggled against the Nuggets otherwise. But I just think Mark Gasol will be even better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, other followers like yeah, you touched on Serge Ibaka. Yeah, I mean that's. So that, those are the big ones. Those That's the interesting. Ones. There's not really any that are like people who've like had a lot of potential and then fell off necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Most of them are just age related who are like bound to regress anyway. There aren't really yeah. any that you could consider huge disappointments. Natural causes. You know, yeah. I think it was someone that could maybe get better mm-hmm. that I like is Damian Jones. You know, Damian used to be a warrior. I don't know. There's something about him. He just seems really. Is that what you, I think young. maybe is what you like about him? The fact that he used to be a warrior. I don't know. There's just something. About, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he I, just seems I don't, I don't see it with Damian Jones. I yeah. think he's, it's a long terrible. shot for sure. Yeah. You, you're right. He is, he is athletic. So, and he's a seven footer. So this athletic seven footer, maybe you could see it, but I don't know. I, Tend to it's a think reach. He's a pretty bad don't, don't it, yeah, it's a reach. I mean, yeah, that's a good. That's what. That's what we would call a deep sleeper. But it's it's an okay. Play. <laughs> hey, Jordan Poole is a deep sleeper. I mean, Jordan Poole had more life than Damian Jones probably does. Right yeah, I mean, now, Jordan but... Poole was a first round pick, and so yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I th- I I think yeah, Damian Jones. He's worth a mention. Like, and he just signed that ten day contract with the Kings. So maybe things hey, are... talk about one thing. Gary freaking Payton. The glove's son? Yeah. Hey, he is locked down low key. He played like five minutes and had like four steals. Again. Yeah, that was impressive. He played some really good defense. And he's he's kinda of, he's a pest. He's he Yo, they put him on they put him on Kemba. A pest is understating it. He is like a full on like hazard out there. Dude, I, I like Gary and he's he's a predator. Up. Yeah, I hate oh, yeah. that predator. Name. That's a good. I don't get why people like want to call themselves the predator. Ugh. Who wants okay. to call themselves <laughs> what? Oh, there's a bunch of UFC fighters with the nickname Predator, and I just don't. Oh, really? Why you would do that? All right, so, in today's world, so They're just most, trying to say something else, I guess. Most likely to rise over the next year, I think. If Embiid, if the Sixers have a like crazy finals run or something, I think Embiid could separate himself into a tier of his own. He's already number one, but I think that could kind of push him over the top to where I'd put him in his own. Yeah, I agree. Um, Christian Wood. I already said that about Christian Wood. Mm-hmm. Christian's in, and mm-hmm. he's going to be a star no matter what. Um. Um. Nick Claxton, I think. Could yeah, definitely. He's got he's got some concerns to, to ease out, but yeah, maybe. He- uh, I think I think Nurkic could potentially rise if he can yeah. play more, and you know, because dude, he had some amazing stat lines before oh, yeah. the major injury, bro. Like he and he's getting back. He's like he he's is. getting back to that point. I think he's moving in the right direction. But he was like, I I was like expecting an All Star season from him. Like he was like really impressive. I remember like one of his first games. I went to the game and he had like 
30 and 20 or something like that. And it was like, yo, what? Yeah. We traded Mason Plumley for this guy. Oh, that's so yeah. crazy. Yeah, but but the way he's bounced back from the wrist injury to this point has been satisfactory to say the least. Yeah. Like, he is meeting and exceeding my expectations. I am sure. Yeah, I think I think he could be a riser, at least within his tier. Um yeah, that's a that's a good point. Because he's not yeah. he's never gonna be like an Adebayo or a Govera or Jokic, but could he pass like Rashad? John Holmes or Brooke Lopez or Miles Turner. Like, yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think yeah. I think that's a good point rising within his tier. I think that's I, a good distinction. I have faith in in Onyeka. Onyeka. Oh gosh, he's been so bad. But I mean, yeah, he's another one like wise been like he's a young you can't just write these young cats off. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I I think as a safe bet to rise, I think that's good. Um Wendell Carter and Robert Williams, I think both of them. Um, is Wendell yeah. a bull or where he's on the magic now? Oh, he's on the magic. Yeah. Zach Collins. We've talked about, yeah. You know, Goga Batadze. I, I like Goga Batadze quite a bit. Oh, um, that's uh who does he play for? The Pacers. Oh yeah. That's right. That's cause I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a seven yeah. footer. He already blocks a ton of shots and he, he can shoot threes. Like that's an interesting player. And he's, yeah. Like I'm, I'm, he's just a guy I have my eye on. Um, dude, talk about an interesting player. Who's that dude on the Thunder? Moses. What's Brown. his last name? No, Polshevsky oh, yeah, or Alex- something. Alexei like Polshevsky. <laughs> yeah, bro. Swag boy. <laughs> dude, uh, no, he had a freaking dime, dude. I saw the highlight. This is just one play, but I mean, I've seen like he's got like a, like a nineteen and nineteen game or something like that. But he had that. Um, it was like Lou Dort highlights, and there was a pass by him where I was like, damn, dude, like that's some impressive vision. He's a rook. Yeah. 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 You, I remember you talked about him in the pre draft thing. Yeah. I think he was like, and he can shoot. You might as well take a chance on him. Yeah. And that's pretty much what he's been. Like, he's just been a complete wild card. He does stuff that looks incredible and he passes it to players on the bench if they stand up. So, (laughs) um, yeah, he's so mixed bag. Um, Oh, that's good. Any, I can't really think of any players aside from just like the old guys who I think are likely regression candidates. Um, I mean, maybe Vucevic yeah. just because that 40% three-point clip yeah. is just such an outlier when you look at what he shot the rest of his career and he doesn't really bring much to the table besides that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Should we get I don't to know the, I mean, we'd pick... I, I think DeAndre Aiden, if if the Suns have a disappointing playoffs and DeAndre Aiden's like lack of like versatility, I don't really see this happening though, honestly. Like I think he'll be just fine in the playoffs. Like I yeah. don't think he's gonna be like blowing anybody's minds, but I don't think he's gonna have some severe fall off in the playoffs. Yeah. Actually, I would I take that back because I don't think DeAndre Aiden's really the type of guy who's gonna get exposed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any likely followers really. Um, no, Stephen Adams at Stephen Adams at twenty five, like he seems pretty calcified. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's pick who we want to have on our team. This was actually really fun when we did this last time. That was a good yeah. idea that Colin had. So, but before we pick, should we all go around and remind everybody who our shooting guards are, so they kind of who's on our team? Of course. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh shoot, who was mine? You had so I kind of splurged at the shooting guard. I took some good players. My my starting shooting guard is Gary Trent Jr. Just because he can play off the ball and he defends well, so just kind of a good three and D wing. I can pair next to my star point guard. So stay tuned because there will be a star point guard on this team. My back, my backup. I got Tyler Hero, just kind of a microwave score off the bench, and um, Pat Connaughton, just kind of inject some energy, inject some. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember who I took. I don't remember who my did I take Booker? Yeah, you, you don't remember yep. and Lou Dort. I think I went, I went Booker, Dort, and Grayson Allen. Yeah, yeah, those I are like damn, that. that's tough. That's tough. So yeah, you've those are my elite offense. You've got elite defense, and then you've got a really solid two way guy. So I think that's yeah. It. I'm gonna go. But yeah, yeah, go ahead. To veer away from the norm, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna go Lou, but I'm gonna go Lou. Clay and my boy mustache Jordan Poole nice. just because Those I feel like that's shooters. the kind of thing we're going for because I feel like it wouldn't be fair to have Gary Lou and Clay that's pretty star studded all right so I think the way we should do this I, I I'm not I'm not gonna pick like stars we clarified this often like this should be somewhat realistic 
Yeah. So I'll, I'll go first. My starting is going to be Jakob Pertl. Just get that rim protection, get that rebounding out there. He's not super versatile, but I don't really need that. If anything, I can go small ball and play a power forward at center with my closing lineups if I need to. So just mm-hmm. having Pertl's shot blocking and um, rebounding for the majority of the game, I think will be incredibly useful. Backup, I mean, you guys have seen this coming from a mile away. I'm going Robin Lopez. Just He just, yeah, I, I what more can I say? I think I've said enough about Lopez, but I love him as a player. And then as my third string guy, I'm just going to go for a guy who is going to sit on the end of the bench. Like, this guy is a long shot. But <laughs> if, he, if he pans out, I'm going to have some defensive versatility. I think he's a high risk. Like, it's probably not going to work out, but possibly high upside. I'm going to go with Zach Collins as my third center. And okay, I like it. Have him chilling on the end of the bench. I like it. Okay. So, Pertle, Lopez, Zach Collins for me. Okay. Um, hmm. You know, I am going to start um, – I don't want to choose someone who's too good. I I'm think gonna I'm going to go – you're gonna take two. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start Brook Lopez. Nice. Yeah. Um, that's a good that's a good pairing with Booker too. I think that's what I was thinking. Um. Uh. Oh damn! I forgot about him. Okay. No, but my Mister Mid Pack. I'm gonna go with. Oh wow. Boy. Damn! I don't know if I can do that next to. Nah. You know. Yeah. Okay, wait, who's your second guy? Robin Lopez. This is no. tough. Which, which, when you look at my list, that seems a little OP for a second guy. But when you think of just like the general consensus of the league, like I think if you told a random NBA fan, like Robin Lopez as a backup center, I don't think they'd That's not unrealistic. Him. Yeah. That's not unrealistic at all. Okay, 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 okay. I need to get my backup. Do you know who your starter is? Um, Kellen. Um, yeah. Who you got? You want me to just say mine? Yeah. Yeah. Give, give me Boucher and give me Kevon. <laughs> I like All it. Right. I actually like that. <laughs> yeah. I think that's cool. Cause yeah, I thought, I definitely thought about Boucher as my start as well. I don't think those are bad picks. I'm going to write Neither. down our whole teams and then we can like, debate which teams would win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're we're not gonna debate it. We're gonna create these rosters in two K and battle it. <laughs> oh, let's go. Okay. Wait, that so would actually my... be sick. All right, so I'm going Brooke Lopez, and I'm bringing old Nick Claxton off. <laughs> Look, yes, I I was hoping you'd pick him because I had to. Ba- basically, when I picked Zach Collins, like if he was healthy. I would hope he gives me what Nick Claxton would be giving your team. So I think. Oh yeah, I think that's a good. Yeah, yeah. I think that at least defensively, offensively, they're obviously completely different players. But yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's a very nice pick. Yeah. Um, I'm leave. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna have a two center squad. Nice. Okay, so I've got Clay, Dort, Poole, Boucher, and Looney. You. Uh, uh, wh- who do you have? You have uh, Jonah. You've got Hero, Gary Trent, Hero, and um, Pat Connaughton, and okay. then my centers are Jakob Pearl, Robin Lopez, and Zach Collins. Robin, yeah, I, I, you are definitely you like, I, you, I can just tell you'd be the guy to just you want some guys at center that are just. I don't know. I, I feel like you'd just be a defensive oriented coach. I don't know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially yeah. like I said it at the top of the show, like defense is the priority when it comes to centers for me. Yeah. And then Shannon, who do you have? Um, all of my players are Booker, Brooke Lopez, uh, Lou Dort, Grayson Allen, and Claxton. Sick dude. All right, let's go. That's gonna be fun. I can't wait to choose point guards. Yeah, this this was a very fun show, you guys. What, what position yeah, should we do? What position should we do next? Let's do PFs. I wanna, that's what I was gonna say. I want to do power forwards. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Power forward. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. So, Is Kelly a power forward or a shooting guard? Kelly, right? 
Is he a small forward? Yeah. I small, small, small. Yeah, he's small. Yeah, right. it's considered probably a small forward. Okay, sick. All right, boys. All right, boys. Uh, so should we just plan on doing the next one sometime between Friday morning and Sunday night of this week? Yeah. Yep. All right. Perfecto. Good. All right. Later, All right, boys. Later. Good night. See you guys. Good night.